fellow hobby joggers. If you are looking for a new marathon shoe or a new race shoe or a new training shoe, make sure to check out the Supwell app. So on the Supwell app, we have the best gently used running shoe inventory. You can buy, sell, and trade shoes with fellow hobby joggers who are enthusiastic about checking out the latest and greatest in footwear. And you can join the training forum so you can post any questions that you might have about your own training and help guide others along on their journey. So if you're interested in joining, it's $1 per month. Link is in the description below. Enjoy today's video. Fellow hobby joggers, welcome back to another list. We are gonna do this one one take style today. I'm actually about to head out to the Charlotte airport in 54 minutes to go to fly to Chicago. I don't know when this video is gonna go up. Maybe it's gonna go up tomorrow. Maybe it's gonna go up in two days. Maybe it's gonna go up I was gonna say in negative two days, but that makes no sense. Maybe it's gonna go up in a week. Anyway, what we're gonna do today is highlight the best race shoes for sub three marathon attempts. Now, last week I was out here, we did a list of the best race shoes for four hour marathons. How's my light? Can I get a little light check? Light check, one, two, one, two. Cielo X1 looking clean. A Little bit of blown out light on the white midsole, but that's all good. We'll adjust. Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 looking crispy as well. So these were two of the shoes from my list for best four hour marathon race shoes. And when I was putting together this list, the best sub three race shoes, which is my speed, my pace, I've run a few sub three marathons this year, it was really hard because <laughs> there are a lot of great shoes. I try to trim these lists down to five, but I'm gonna give you seven today. And I'm gonna start off with two honorable mention shoes. The reason I'm not putting them in the core five, so it's gonna say five best race shoes, but five plus these two honorable mention, that makes seven. The reason I'm not putting this in the core list is these two are a tiny bit more comfort oriented than the five that I'm about to highlight here. The five that I have here are all faster feeling than these and there's one or two of the five behind the camera that I'll highlight that feel faster respectively for this. So there's a faster version of the Endorphin Pro 4 that I'll highlight and a faster version of the Cielo X1. But let's start off with the Cielo X1, honorable mention. This is the Hobby Jogger race shoe of 2024. You get two different types of Piba. You get a softer one on the top, a firmer one on the bottom, and a crazy rocker. The ride on this thing is smooth. It's bouncy, I've used it for long runs with race pace. The reason why I'm not choosing it for my Chicago Marathon shoe, and the reason why it's just falling outside of the core list and going on to honorable mention, is because of the weight. Now, this is controversial. We got a guy riding a legit mower just on the street. That's a street legal mower. They see me rolling. Controversial, maybe a little bit about the weight when we're thinking about how much this shoe weighs and is it a legit race shoe? Is it? It is a legit race shoe. I've run six flat pace in this. I did one 22 mile long run with eight miles at a six flat pace. However, if I am choosing a shoe for my PR attempt, at sub three paces, I would prefer to go with a lighter shoe. All of the other shoes that I have here in this box are all clustered around two, clustered around 220 to 230 grams in my size. This is the one outlier at 250 to 260. So if that's when it's what it's gonna come down to on race day, I will go for that slightly lighter shoe. And it's one of those things where I just don't wanna be in my head about is the shoe slowing me down? And if I go for the lighter one, if I, if I were to buy a new shoe and I would decide between do I want Alpha Fly or Cielo X1 for sub three, it might come down to the weight. So that's why it's falling right outside. And then Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. You'll see that I'm highlighting the Endorphin Elite, spoiler alert, later on 
in this list. That's the one that I would pick for sub three attempts if we're thinking about Endorphin Pro 4 versus Endorphin Elite personally at my paces. Now I was training for around a 240 in Chicago. All of my race paces in training when I was coming out here and slaughtering myself over the hills were anywhere from a 550 to a 610. And at those paces, I prefer to run in the Endorphin Elite. Now, when I was training for a sub three and when I did run a sub three, 255 around the neighborhood, this was great. And the Endorphin Elite felt too aggressive. So it's a little bit of a split character here. The Endorphin Pro is a great shoe at $225. It's durable, it's comfortable, it's fun. Slightly soft. There's just other shoes that feel a little bit faster and that's why it's fallen outside but if we're thinking about value this still is one of the best value shoes out there at 225 dollars and that's why it's getting honorable mention and i still think it's a great shoe for most people however if you look at most people most people are not running sub three marathons and so this is the sub three marathon shoe but going on the sub or did go on the four hour marathon list and so did the clo x1 so now let's get into the core list as we typically do let us go from lowest in price to highest in price so starting off lowest in price here this guy needs a little bit of a wipe down here look at that 230 dollars puma dv8 nitro elite three a shoe that grew on me a ton from the first run first run i did in this shoe i told you i felt like isaiah pacheco may he get well soon running like a toddler trying on shoes running like i'm angry at the ground, running like a Mario character, stomping. I had to put so much force and power and aggression into the front of this platform to get anything out of it on the first run. And my first run in this was actually the best 10 mile run I'd ever done up until that point. I did 10 miles at under a six flat pace and I was flying. It was just that the shoe was no fun at all to run in. But second run in this shoe, took it out for 20 miles or was it 20 or 22? I think 20 miles with eight at threshold, four in the beginning, four in the second half, and those thresholds were done at around 540 and 530, and it felt great. So it does require some break-in, give the shoe 20 to 30 miles of break-in. It's like a softer, zippier Light Strike Pro, maybe a little bit of a zippier Adios Pro 3, and a more aggressive version of the Endorphin Pro 4. And so I, I was saying this was the shoe of the year, race shoe of the year before I tried a lot of these other ones and the DV8 Elite 3 has now come and taken its spot for me at that $230 price point. It does feel a little bit less versatile and mass appeal than the Endorphin Pro 4, especially because the foam aggressively cuts off on the back and someone commented on the last video I did with this shoe, it is a shoe that encourages and requires a certain form. So running mid to four foot and when I'm running fast, I can feel that benefit but the foam once it's broken in is extremely lively it's fast and you get the puma grip the last workout i did in this shoe or the last run i did was actually a workout in the pouring rain it was a little bit of a mess out here i was running off target on every single pace but the shoe was gripping and ripping and allowing me to at least attempt at running fast in the rain so this is a great wet weather race shoe this is the best wet weather race shoe out there Maybe the Audios, new Audios Pro 4 will have something to say about that. I have not tested that one, by the way. That's why you will not see it on this list. Maybe it will make the 2025 list. But Pumi DV8 Nitro Elite 3, $25. Bounty foam, not too soft, not too firm. A great shoe for a sub three attempt. Also, this is one of the best if you miss the feel of the Vaporfly. It's a touch firmer than the old Vaporfly, but it has that Hornet-like aggressive character so that is 225 dollars now next going up in price we are jumping we're sorry 230 we're jumping up to 275 in the socket endorphin elite that's the next shoe here and all these other shoes are going to be 275 and above but hey if you want the performance these brands are saying if you want the performance bucko you gotta pay you gotta pay and so these sub three shoes are going to be more expensive than standard training shoes, $275 in the Endorphin Elite. So this guy, super aggressive rocker, full carbon fiber plate. All these shoes have the full carbon fiber plate and a little bit of a firmer foam. So Endorphin Pro 4, softer Piba, beaded Piba, Endorphin Elite, 
snappier, firmer. So this is one of the three shoes that I'm deciding between for the Chicago Marathon. This, the Alpha Fly, and the Cloud Boom. Alpha Fly feels the most aggressive to me with the AirPod. The Cloud Boom feels the softest and the most comfortable. This, at times, feels a touch harsh, and that's why if you're not running sub three paces, I would not recommend the shoe. Now, there are some people out there who do well in this shoe not running those sub three paces, but for me, the times where I've enjoyed this the most, I'm getting down to six flat, which is around my marathon pace. If I'm not running marathon pace or faster, it doesn't feel great. So I actually got my best or longest and fastest training run of the block in this shoe, 16 miles at a 557 average pace and it disappeared on foot so if you're looking for a shoe with a nice rocker look at this bada boom this would be the comfort rocker shoe the cielo x1 and this is the aggressive rocker shoe two shoes with awesome rockers and bouncy foams but a little bit firmer in the endorphin elite more aggressive but flings you right along with that roll so moving up next in price we have cloud boom $280. Last run I did in this was also in the pouring rain. And you can see we have the dirt and the muck on the bottom. So the calling card of this shoe, the calling card of the Endorphin Elite was the rocker and the foam. The calling card of this shoe is what On has done with the insole. So very thick insole in here that adds this soft step in feel and a bouncy ride. That's like nothing else that I've tried. It's really not like any other race shoe, which is cool. And unlike the Cielo X1, it has a touch more snap. It's not as relaxed and it's not as heavy. So lighter than the Cielo X1, not as harsh as the Endorphin Elite. This is the Goldilocks shoe and it's actually coming in at slot three here. So this is the one that's gonna work the best for most people. The upper is a little bit weird and I didn't know anything about the uppers yet but any of these other shoes because they're not notable. This one is uh, notable. I had to replace the laces and there's a weird bump out pop with the upper. So that was a bit distracting on some of the runs I've done with this shoe but once I switched out the laces and got past that it was fine. So if you want something comfortable that can also go fast that would be the Cloud Boom. The wet weather performance is great. It's not as aggressive feeling as the Alpha Fly with the Endorphin Elite, but it's comfort, bounce, and fun. Bada boom, bada bang. Now, next up, you already know, Alpha Fly. This, out of all these shoes, is the most aggressive of the bunch to me. This and the Endorphin Elite. Reason being with the Alpha Fly, you have these AirPods in the front and it really encourages you to be running with a certain form. Now, this shoe also, because of that AirPod and a bit of a higher drop feeling can work my hips some. This is something I got with the Mag Max. Any of these higher drop shoes or shoes that encourage a four foot landing can work my hips when I'm running at faster paces. So keep that in mind. But if you are looking for a bouncy, aggressive, fast shoe for a sub three marathon PR attempt, I would highly recommend the Alpha Fly. The bounce is like, nothing else you get the top layer of the race foam full carbon fiber plate of course and then the air pod so that's the unique calling card of the alpha fly and if you can optimize your stride to bounce off the air pod uh, air pods you'll be golden if you're more of a rear foot striker you can still work with this shoe as i am and i've found a way to work with the shoe but i also find myself pressing forward a little bit more leaning forward trying to pop off the front so this is a shoe where it doesn't quite require break-in but it requires you to learn how to use the shoe it's a tool for the job and I've had to learn how to work with this shoe but now that I have it is super fast out there and that's why it's one of my five favorite race shoes and one of the best shoes for sub three marathon attempts and it has the fastest marathon time Kelvin Kiptum may he rest in peace was rocking this when he set the world record last year. So last one up here, Diodora Gara, $300. Did I say the price of the Alpha Fly? $285. Diodora Gara, $300 MSRP. People also posted codes for this shoe on the Supwell app, codes for, I think there's a $50 off you can get. But out of all these shoes that we're highlighting here today, this is the softest. If you are lighter on your feet, type of runner or just like a soft ride and you're trying to go sub three 
Diodora Gara is the best soft race shoe on the market. This is the other one I would consider if you're a fan of the Vaporfly 2 and you just don't like how the 3 feels, I much prefer this to the 3. Yes, it's soft. Yes, it compresses a lot, but not as much as the Vaporfly, and there's just way more protection up here. So sometimes in the Gara, and the reason I didn't pull it into my final 3 list for Chicago, which was Alpha Fly, Cloud Boom, and Endorphin Elite, the reason I didn't... Here's the thing. The reason I did not pull it into that final list it was just a touch too soft in the forefoot but it's not that soft where it's bottoming out or I'm slamming against the ground it's the soft where I'm debating if I'm putting down too much power into the shoe however I have found for me there's a tipping point between 620 and 630 or 630 and 640 so let's call it 630 if I'm going below 630 per mile pace some shoes work well for that and some shoes don't that's what i found with the endorphin pro that's what i found with the diodora gara this was great when i was going 650 or 640 as marathon pace now that my marathon pace has shifted down below 630 and my last marathon my pace was a 620 something it's just a touch too soft so if you like really soft and you're not 6'2, that's the other thing going at a 605 pace at six foot two that's a lot of force on the shoe but if you're maybe a little bit smaller or running a little bit faster it's gonna work great or if you just love the feeling of soft shoes if you just love soft shoes this is gonna be awesome no question about it so those are the five today best value sub three ratio that is the deviate nitro elite three at 230 dollars Endorphin Elite here. This is the best rockered ride of the bunch on Cloud Boom. This one is gonna be the best ride for most people. Not too soft, not too firm, but leans, comfort, very comfortable shoe. Alpha Fly, most aggressive. Best if you really wanna take a go at taking a chunk out of your PR. And then Diodora Gara, best soft shoe. So there you have it. Five best reshoes. I think we actually needed to do one cut today. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it in. Maybe I'll leave it in. But those are the five best sub three reshoes. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what one of these you've tried. Also, let me know what, who did I snub? Did I snub the Adios Pro 3? Did I snub the Mizuno Wave Rebellion 2? Maybe I snubbed the Nike Pegasus because that's your sub three ratio of choice. I don't know. Either way, I'll be back tomorrow with another video.